Hello everyone, let's create a dreamy spring forest scene in Photoshop. If you want to follow along, you can find a link to the raw files in the description of the video. And now let's begin. First, the raw adjustments, which we will do in the camera raw editor. You can see I already have opened up the HDR panorama shot. If you don't know how to merge a HDR panorama, that's pretty easy. Simply select all the images you want to work with, right click, and here choose Merge to HDR Panorama. Depending on the amount of images you use, this might take a while. Once Photoshop is done, you can set up a few things here. The biggest help for this shot might be the boundary warp, with which you can fill the gaps towards the edge of the image. And in this case, this just works pretty good since we don't have a visible horizon. Otherwise, the boundary warp will make the horizon look very, very strange and skew it a lot. Besides that, I'm not setting up anything else. We don't need to apply auto settings or auto crop since we will be doing that ourselves. And once that is set up, just hit the merge button. And once done, we will end up with something like this. You can see I already have applied some quite heavy cropping. I do want these trees to kind of center the rest of the image. So that is looking pretty good. Of course, there are still some gaps left right there in the top left corner. I uh, will be filling that with the Content Aware tool later in Photoshop. Now let's focus on the raw adjustments. First off, switch the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard, just to lessen the contrast a bit. And for a dreamy forest scene, a little bit less contrast works quite good. Then let's expand the basic panel. Also take a look at the histogram. You can see there's a, just a tiny bit of unexposure going on and a bit of overexposure as well. That's the reason why we are shooting an HDR sequence in the first place. You can see some pretty blown out highlights there in the back, which we can easily fix. For that, let's bring down the highlights all the way. And of course this makes the whole image a lot darker. We don't want that. So let's bring the exposure up just a bit. And to further introduce some brightness, I'm going to bring up the shadows. Again, this will lessen the contrast, which works quite good for the dreamy scene. We could bring up the whites and let's bring up the blacks. Looking much better so far. There's no under or overexposure anymore. I think we're lacking some contrast. So I want to push it up slightly. And at this point, we can adjust the white balance as well. At the moment, it's just a tiny bit too warm. So what I want to do is just bring down the temperature very, very slightly, introducing some blue tones. But I think that's looking quite good already. Then what I want to do next is to introduce some texture, giving all those smaller details some sharpness. And at the same time, I'm going to bring down the clarity which helps to create a dreamy effect on top of the image. If you want, you could also bring down the dehaze, which really helps for that effect, but it also makes the image brighter and adds even less contrast. So I'm not a big fan of the negative dehaze for this image. But I do want to introduce some vibrance. And that is the image after the basic adjustments. Before, after. You see, we have much more details, especially in those highlights, which we have saved. Now I do want to adjust a few things locally. That means we are going to do some masking. The first thing I want to change is I want to add a lot more detail into this patch of plants down there in the foreground. I'm going to create a simple linear gradient, just covering most of it roughly. And of course, there are a few things selected which we don't need to change. So I'm going to click on those three dots and then intersect mask with color range. And then I'm just clicking somewhere in the green area right there in the foreground to create a very precise selection of those plants. We can refine it some more to target a wider area. And with that selection, I'm going to bring up the contrast. I'm also going down to the effects and here I want to bring up the clarity quite a lot, which will really help in this case. Let's also bring up the texture and that's looking really, really good. 
Then let's add another linear gradient right away on top of it, just for the very near foreground in the bottom part. Yeah, just want to bring down the exposure, adding some kind of vignetting effect. All right. Next, we can work on those trees to the sides of the image. And that's pretty easily done by using a brush tool, just roughly painting over the trees. Just like that. What I want to do here is again add a little bit of clarity, just adding some more details to the trees. And I think I'm also going to add some texture. Perfect. Now, the area around the center of the image looks quite good. But at this point, you can see there's a pretty dark spot right there in the center, which is not okay. So let's create a radial gradient covering most of the center like this. And in here, I, I think I'm going to increase the shadows. And I'm also going to increase the whites. Just like that, and it's fixed. Finally, let's create one more linear gradient for the very top part. And what I want to do with this one is to target the highlights and make them darker. So I can simply bring down the highlights for that. And by doing this, we can reveal some of those blue color tones from the sky, which looks really, really good on this shot. Perfect. And that's the image after the local adjustments. So let me toggle the visibility before, after. You can see the light situation is much better with the masks. Let's continue doing a little bit of color grading. Not much going on here. I'm just going into the color mixer. And first I want to work on the luminance. I do want to bring up the green luminance very, very slightly, which in turn will make all the plants a little brighter. And I'm also going to drop the blue luminance just to reveal some more blue tones in the highlights in the back. Perfect. Now let's switch over into the saturation tab. I'm going to bring up the aqua saturation and the blue saturation. Wonderful. Now we're almost done with the raw adjustments. I'm not going to do any color grading anymore in here, but I do want to add some sharpening by using the details tab. As always, I'm bringing down the radius. I'm adding a bit of detail and add some masking. We can add quite a lot actually, since we have a lot of smaller details in here. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening. Perfect. And that's the image after the raw adjustments. Before, after. Now we can make this image a little more dreamy using a bit of Photoshop. So let's open up the subject. First, of course, I want to fix those gaps. Let me duplicate that layer by pressing Ctrl J, just to have a backup. And then let's zoom in at the very top right there. Those smaller gaps should be easily filled with the spot healing brush. Just like that. Now the gap on the left is a little more tricky. Grab the clone stamp tool and just copy the tree. I'm just trying to work my way through the gap with the clone stem tool in this case. Actually, let me try the content aware first. I'm just using the lesser tool to create a rough selection here. And I hope, let's have hit shift F5. I hope the content aware tool can handle this. It can't. Then I think what we need to do is to just crop the image. I'm going to take away parts like this from the left and also from the right to balance it some more. Maybe I even want to take away a bit from the top, just like that. Okay, still we are left with a bit of a gap right there. Let's again try to fill it somehow. I want to give the content a bare fill one more try. It's looking much better. It's not perfect, but I don't think anyone will notice right there in the corner. Then there is a very annoying branch right there on the right side. Again, just using the spot healing brush to paint over it. All right, much cleaner. Then let's make this shot a little dreamier. I'm going to duplicate that layer again by hitting Ctrl J. Then let's go to Filter, Blur, 
And here we're choosing Gaussian Blur. The reason we do that is because we want to add an Orton Glow effect on top. Here I'm just going with the radius around 15% like this and hit OK. Right away, let's go to Edit and click on Fade Gaussian Blur. I'm going to set the blending mode to Overlay, which creates a very contrast rich Orton Glow effect. Of course, this is way too heavy, so I want to bring down the opacity. Let's bring it down quite a bit. But I think that looks great. Okay. Next up, I do want to specifically target the highlights of the image. Usually I would use the TK panel for that, but I think in this case we can just go with the Photoshop shortcut, which is Control Alt 2. And I want to further modify the selection. So let's grab the rectangular tool right here and change the mode to subtract because I don't want the foreground to be affected. So I'm going to just subtract the selection here. Next up, let's copy the selected area by hitting Ctrl C and hit Ctrl V to create a new layer out of this. And with that selection again, I'm going to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Again, I'm going with something around 15%, hit OK. Of course, that is way, way, way too much. So I'm going to bring down the opacity of this layer. Just want to have a very subtle glow going on. All right, we can further improve that by adding a new layer and this time switch the blending mode to hard light. And then I'm grabbing the brush by pressing B. Let's set the foreground color to white and bring down the brush opacity to 10%. Now I'm just going to paint in some glowing spots on top of those highlights in the distance. That should be enough. After those adjustments, again, I'm kind of struggling with the center, which is still a bit too dark. So I just want to add a new layer, switch the blending mode to overlay, again with the brush tool and the higher brush opacity. Now I'm just, actually, let's not raise that opacity this much, but I think around 20% should be fine. And with that brush, I'm going to just paint in a few times on the center. That looks much, much better. Now I want to merge everything into a single layer. For that, I'm hitting Control Shift Alt E. And with that layer, I do want to apply some warp effect. So let's hit Control T, right click in the image and choose warp. What I want to do here is to kind of adjust the trees on both sides a little more. I want to bring the top part of the tree further to the left and the bottom part further to the right. Just like that. Of course, we are creating a gap on the far left side, so I'm trying to fill that. That should be good enough. Now you might think nothing much has changed, but let me deactivate the layer so you can see the difference from before to after. All right. We're almost done. I just want to tweak a few more things. The next thing I want to do is to add a levels adjustment layer. And here I just want to bring up the highlights some more and adjust the midtones a little bit as well, creating some more contrast. So that's looking pretty good, except for the highlights in the sky again. So I'm making use of that layer mask, grab a black brush, and I'm just brushing out all those highlights, which really don't need to be brighter. And I'm also going to brush over the foreground, which at this point is a bit too bright. All right, then let's merge everything one more time and let's add one more Gaussian blur on top of it. So let's go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Again, around 50 pixel radius, hit okay. I'm going straight to the blending mode of that layer and change it to lighter color and bring down the opacity. That's looking great. One final thing I want to do is to do some burning. So one more new layer. Again, switch the blending mode to overlay. And this time I do have to make use of the TK panel plugin since I want to specifically target areas. So let's open this up. This is a paid plugin, but there is a free version available if you want to give this a try. And let's see. I do want to target the trees in the back. 
and those are mostly made up of dark tones so we are going to use a darks mask this is a too general mask so let's bring it down i think the darks for mask looks pretty good so let's apply this as a layer mask and with that let's grab the brush tool set the foreground color to black since we want to make things darker and i'm also going to bring down the brush opacity and now i'm just going to paint over the trees making them a little darker and just adding some more contrast this way perfect and that's it for editing this dreamy forest landscape i hope this photoshop tutorial was helpful if you have any questions left as always feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video